In this video, we're going to talk about the best practices for doing part to whole. Now, if you haven't already done the reading on part to whole, make sure you stop now, go back and do the reading because this is more of a um, summary and um, more not, not going to focus on all of the details that are in the reading. So from the reading, you remember that the definition of a part to whole is the relationship of a proportion of a whole to itself. We're basically talking about the share of market for a particular product or for a particular company. Uh, when you see terms like the rate of total or the percentage or percentage of total accounts for X percent, you know you're talking about a part to whole. Now ranking is just a specialized part to whole. We'll talk about ranking separately. So let's talk about the not wrong graphs for part to whole. Now, there is a lot of debate out there as to whether or not people should use pie charts. I used to be on the side of the debate that said, no, never ever use pie charts. However, I now am more softening in that opinion. Now, I still think that we have to be very careful with using pie charts and follow some real specific rules for them but we should probably use them sometimes because they are intuitive, but we need to be real careful about when we use them because they are some of the most misused charts out there, all right? And it's because of things like this. Graphs like this give pie charts a really bad name. And just look at it. All of the slices of the pizza are the same size, and yet all of these percentages are running around um, with no relationship to what's being represented in the in the graph. This is what, what Tufty would call a duck because the pizza image is purely a design element. It's not about the data at all. All right. Although we have to wonder about these people in the UK that mushroom is the most liked pizza topping. I don't know. I don't know about that. All right. So the slices are equal. They don't add up to 100%. When we're talking about a part to whole, we have to have them add up to 100%. Now, in this case, you might be saying, well, yes, but you could have two toppings on one pizza. And that's true. But then we're talking about a multiple part to whole, and we have to deal with those slightly differently. Here's another example of the bad of pie charts. In this case, we've got a pie chart that's showing us the population of the United States broken up by state and so there's 50 slices well I guess there's more than 50 slices because I see Puerto Rico and I see other which must be things like you know the Guam the US Virgin Islands and things like that but is this in interpretable at all not really the only reason you know who the second and third states are is because this pie chart happens to be arranged properly, which is by in, in order, right? But if you were looking over here, maybe at Arizona and Washington, without seeing the numbers, you would have no idea which of those slices is larger or smaller, except that you know that, oh, I guess Arizona is smaller because it's, it's further around from the biggest one, but how much smaller, it's impossible to know. And here's an interesting thing. Massachusetts is 6.5, Arizona is 6.4. So we're going from 6.5, 6.4, 6.5, 6.4. It's just a mess, all right? So we don't want to do pie charts with 50 slices. But if you are going to use a pie chart, you want to have no more than three slices. And the slices should clearly be different sizes. So if all of the slices are 33%, I don't know how useful adding the pie chart is. It's not adding intuitive information. Now it can only be continuous data, not ordinal data. We'll look at what we would do with ordinal data later. All right. Always show 100% of the whole. So don't make a pie chart that only has 80% of your data. You want to always show the full whole. No 3D, no exploded slices. Now this one's a little bit funny, but obviously you can't do a pie chart with negative numbers. Uh, unless the whole, all of the whole is negative, right? So all of the numbers have to be uh, the same sign. And we don't want to compare multiple pie charts to each other. These are the rules about if you're going to use a pie chart, follow these rules and you'll be able to use them well. 
Also note how I put the labels for the slices right in the middle of the slices. Again, saves space, saves pixels. If you're going to put the labels around here or have a separate legend, it's just not worth it. Again, why do we not do we not only show part? So here we've got a consumer and a corporate pie chart which is showing just those two slices but not showing home office. Now again, that might be this is not a lie but it's making the, the user believe that we only sold in two categories, right? So I took out the red data, I filtered out home office, and my pie chart very nicely switched to looking like this, but as we can see, we're not really telling the, the, the real truth here. Consumer is just over 50% of our sales, not 62.19, all right? Again, you see why we can't do sli these, these, these multiple slices because beyond the fact that it kind of makes you look, feel like you're kind of looking down some sort of psychedelic tube, it's just not interpretable without a huge table of data you're going to put next to it. Now, we don't do ordinal data like um, survey results. I should have ordered the answers better over here in the legend, but we don't do survey results like this. We're going to do that with a slightly different thing that we'll look at later. All right, like this. We should, we can do ordinal results like this because ordinal results have an order. A pie chart is supposed to be um, arranged by the order of the data. This one happens to not be uh, because Tableau knows there's something screwy going on with this one. Um, but when I put them into order like this, because the ordinal values have an order, they should be in that order regardless of what the size of the slices are. All right. So that's why we don't use a pie chart for ordinal data. We'll use the stacked bar or stacked column. Either way. This is why we don't ask people to try to compare multiple pie charts to each other. It's already hard. For, we've already talked about this multiple times. It's very hard to compare the sizes of two shapes, but it's even more hard to compare the, the uh, sizes of shapes that are inconsistent. So the area of this slice versus the area of this slice versus the area of this slice. Now, is this slice bigger than this slice? Not really sure, right? Maybe it just rotated around because the red slice got bigger and the blue slice got smaller. It's very hard to um, ask the person to compare these different levels across multiple pie charts. All right. So we'll talk about an alternative to that later. Okay. So the, the alternative to the pie chart is the stacked column chart. All right. Especially when we want to compare multiple parts to whole, we want to get away from pie charts and look at something else. All right. So a stacked column here is easy, right? I mean, you, you've got this one where it's actually the, against the absolute volume of sales, or you could actually do this against 100% by year, or you even would probably use those two things together. Now, just a couple more not wrong charts um, for parts of whole. Tree maps are very, are very um, popular. I think that their use is, they're, they're overused uh, because it's, it, the only thing that's kind of nice about a tree map is it helps you do part to holes by category, right? So in this case, we have um, home office is, is the green, consumer is the darker purple, and corporate is the lighter purple, right? So um, we can see kind of a part to hole in each. But again, remember, because we're, cha we're, we're not comparing shapes of equivalent um, aspect ratio, it's very hard to compare the relative sizes. Now we know that all three of those are bigger than all three of these, but how much bigger? Maybe half, maybe two thirds. It's really kind of hard to sort that out. Especially when you get into something like this, where you've got tons and tons and tons of, of, of um, division in the tree map. Now, sometimes tree maps work quite well but only when you're really trying to show kind of some really overarching pattern and not compare the blocks to each other. 
Finally, a donut chart is very popular these days. Um, I'll show you how to do a donut chart in the hands-on, but all a donut chart really is, is a pie chart with a white circle in the middle, right? So it has, it, it's, it's subject to all the same um, um, caveats as the pie chart, except one thing is better in a donut chart than a pie chart. And that is that we are really, in this case, only comparing relative lengths of segments because the width of that donut is consistent across the entire, um, it's across the entire uh, graph, right? So we're only really just saying, what are the differences in the lengths of those? So in, in one sense, the donut chart is slightly um, easier to understand than the pie chart. So in generally, we should always make sure we're indicating the whole, especially when illustrating multiple parts to whole. And th that's, significantly important if you're going to show the parts to whole of sales for multiple years you have to show the whole for all the years um, if you're going to show multiple parts to whole um, for different categories you have to show all of the the whole you can't just show a bunch of percentages like in that pizza thing we have to illustrate that each of those percentages for the pizza in the pie chart pizza are each going against a hundred percent and then it makes the person understand that we're comparing each of those to 100%. They're not supposed to add up to 100%. And anything more than seven, five, excuse me, five to seven parts is going to overload the viewer's ability to make comparisons. And I'll go over this a little bit more when I'm doing the hands-on video in a little while.